Hey what's up guys and welcome to Xbox One and we are going to be taking a look at the best games of 2018. Me and Benny have compiled our lists of our personal favourites and we're going to describe them all to you and let you decide for yourselves. Let's have a look at what we picked. We don't want to kill any of you, but trust me, we will. Nier Automata released on Xbox in June 2018 and for me it's one of my most highly recommended games to come out on Xbox this year. Published by Square Enix, it's an action RPG that was released as a sequel to previous Nier titles, though you don't need to have played the previous games to follow the story, as they're only very vaguely connected. You play as 2B, a Yorha combat android sent to Earth to drive back the machines that have taken over the surface, with the hopes of humanity eventually returning to reclaim the planet. 2B and enthusiastic companion 9S explore the open world while questioning whether the war they're entrenched in is really what it seems, or whether there's something else beneath the surface. The choices you make during the gameplay will affect your experience. At one point during your playthrough, the story reaches a crescendo. It feels like you've got to the end and you're left with a load of unanswered questions. But this is in fact not the end, and if you start the game again and keep playing, you'll find out a lot more. Mia has multiple endings, and I use that term very loosely because the gameplay changes each time you restart until the very final real ending. All the paths are incredible and are a main part of the story, so they're definitely worth exploring, otherwise you're only experiencing half the game. You really have to play it to appreciate the way devs have managed to combine so many different genres into the gameplay. A lot of the game and combat is in third person standard RPG style, but the game transforms into a platformer, a space shooter, and a more fixed perspective style depending on the fights. Mia has a lot of underlying themes and a great story. It's a game I'd recommend to anyone who enjoys RPGs. Hopefully, you'll fall in love with it as I did. It looks and plays fantastically on the Xbox One X. And last hint, try out 2B's self-destruct feature. You may be surprised. <laughs> Is that all you've got, little android? I'll kill you! Now, it will be no surprise to many of you that Call of Duty Black Ops 4 makes it as one of the best games of 2018. And no, it's not because I'm a massive COD fanboy, but because Treyarch have done an incredible job with this year's instalment. The single player campaign has gone out the window in favour of three completely different gameplay experiences through multiplayer, zombies, and Call of Duty's first battle royale, Blackout. Multiplayer is very similar to Black Ops 3, though no longer has that advanced movement, so no more running along walls. You have a range of different specialists who have different abilities, which are a lot of fun to use. You'll never get bored running into a room full of people and using Ruin's Gravity Slam to take them all out. Zombies also launched with multiple maps to play on straight off the bat. Two new maps which are set around the new zombie chaos crew, Eleven which is set within a coliseum, and Voyage of Despair which is set on board the Titanic after it crashed into the iceberg. You then have Blood of the Dead which is a remake of Mob of the Dead set on Alcatraz and Classified which is the return of the Pentagon map from Black Ops 1. And finally you have Blackout which is the game's much loved battle royale. Since launch it has been receiving regular updates from improvements to the game to new weapons and vehicles with the new Operation Absolute Zero. For me personally I think this is the best battle royale out there currently with the intensity that comes with the battle royale mixed with the satisfying gunplay of a Call of Duty title. This is one that is definitely worth playing. The vast expanse of the Seven Seas opened up to us back in March with the release of the highly anticipated Sea of Thieves, a game where you can live out your wildest pirate fantasies, sailing a galleon with your shipmates to plunder the shores, fight the skeleton crews, and secure the gold. You customize and play as yourself, but pirate, grab some voyages from the local vendors, jump on your pristine ship, and set sail, following maps, clues, and bounties to search for loot to sell for gold. You level up different factions and are rewarded with cosmetics for your pirate and your ship. Since release, Sea of Thieves has seen multiple free content updates, including adding bosses like Megalodon and the Kraken, and increasing the variety of loot and quests. Skeleton crews now hide in the mists and sail menacingly along, sometimes engaging you in combat. And if you want, you can hunt a skeleton fort, grab all that booty, and try to sail to safety before the other pirate players find you and take advantage of your fatigue. 
Sea of Thieves released on day one to Xbox Game Pass, meaning Game Pass subscribers could play it from release and benefit from all the updates and no extra charge. And the game is a Play Anywhere title, which means you can play it on Xbox or PC and crossplay with your friends on the other platform. The Shroud is Spoiled update released very recently, and there's plenty more on the way to sink your wooden leg into. Trust in your crew. Next up, we have one of my favorite games of the year and easily one of the best racing games of 2018, Forza Horizon 4. With the game being set in Britain, I think for a lot of us, it made it extra special as we drove around this beautiful world that Playground Games had created. Recognizing small details like the road signs or the post boxes that really made the world feel so familiar. The game is just pure magical fun, with staples from previous Horizon games making a return from the incredible showcase events that'll see you racing a hovercraft or the flying Scotsman, to even having this awesome Halo showcase where you race a pelican in a warthog. You have over 450 different cars to drive, including the McLaren Senna. You have a countless amount of things to do, from speed tracks to danger signs, street races to off-road, and we haven't even touched on how the game evolves across four different seasons, giving you a different experience and feel every time the season changes, along with new content being added every single week, including new racing championships to get involved in, meaning you've always got something to do, whatever the weather. This is also a world you can share and enjoy with your friends, whether you want to speed along the motorway or get involved in the Fortathon, which happens every single hour in this shared world. And it is available to play with your Xbox Game Pass subscription on Xbox One, so if you haven't played Forza Horizon 4, go and download it right now and I promise you, you'll have an amazing time. Okay, new LZ found. We don't have long. This ring is going to go nuclear in three minutes, and we do not want to be here when it does. Battlefield is a staple in the game catalogue for many, and Battlefield 5 released this November with a bang. Or maybe a tank shell. Probably the same shell that blew me across the map that one time. Battlefield 5 keeps us in historic combat with a World War II setting featuring Norway, Libya, Belgium, and more of the lesser known battles. There are war stories that offer an insight into different experiences of the areas of the war through a variety of perspectives. There's the usual huge multiplayer and the Tides of War updates that bring new maps, weapons and more to the game periodically. Customization has been massively focused on with clothing, weapons and skins for vehicles and guns all changeable via your company. The gameplay feels as epic as you'd expect from a Battlefield game. Huge scale conquest games with micro battles happening at each flag, with tanks, planes and stationary guns to push through defences and cause chaos. You can build fortifications to mount a defence with ammo and medic stations to help your team in different ways. Grand Operations is a new mode that brings together the fun mechanics and tactics from other modes in a three day tug of war, forcing you to alter your playstyle and really work as a team to succeed. The first Tides of War update, Overture, released this December and the next is set for early in the new year. With Xbox One X enhancements, 4K and HDR, this is easily one of the best looking games of 2018. This is when I was shooting pretty in prison, mate. I was not bothering nobody, not getting shot at you, you come along. Lara Croft made a kick-ass return in 2018 with Shadow of the Tomb Raider and is probably one of the best action-adventure games that you can get your hands on this year. The game is the third installment to the franchise since the reboot, following on shortly after the end of Rise of the Tomb Raider, where once again you're going up against the organization Trinity in a race to help stop the Mayan apocalypse. Rise of the Tomb Raider is available to play on Xbox Game Pass as well, as there really is no better time to see what the fuss is about. Now, I've been a huge Tomb Raider fan since I was a kid, and this game really helped bring back some of the reasons that I fell in love with the franchise in the first place. With the challenge teams really forcing you to think and spend time in solving some of the puzzles that you'll come across, especially when you turn off hints for the true Tomb Raider experience. The game also brought a load of new features, such as covering yourself in mud during stealth sequences to help blend Lara into the environment. Not to mention the combat and stealth takedowns also feel incredible. So if you want to help Lara stop the mine apocalypse, make sure to give Shadow of the Tomb Raider a play. What will I become? Red Dead Redemption 2 was possibly the most highly anticipated game of the year on many a gamer's list, and for very good reason. The first game set an incredibly high bar, a story that tugged at the heartstrings and made you feel epic in equal amounts. Immersive, 
cowboy gameplay, beautiful graphics, and the clever humour that Rockstar are great at writing. That meant that the sequel had a lot of expectations to live up to, and I think it's fair to say it delivered in spades. It's potentially the most immersive game out there. You'll need to cut your own hair and do your camp chores as you would in real life, but the immersion runs deep in a world that feels alive and evolving around you. Townspeople all talk to you and have something to say. The side quests are interesting and give you insight to the people and context of the world you're living in. It's all just very masterfully crafted. The characters are funny and most importantly, they feel real and human. And this is all without mentioning how absolutely incredible it looks on the Xbox One X. The only flaw is that everything is so interested, I get so distracted, that when I log on to do a mission, I leave five hours later, having made literally no mission progress, because I spent the whole time just exploring and loving it, so it might not be a flaw. Red Dead 2 will be a game that people talk about fondly for many years from now. Next up, we have Far Cry 5 from Ubisoft, which launched back in March, and just recently, we got our very first details on the continuation from Far Cry 5, Far Cry New Dawn. Far Cry 5 takes place in Hope County, which is an area based in Montana in the United States. The game has an incredible starting sequence where you go and meet the father, the leader of the cult Eden's Gate, where your helicopter gets brought down and you have to run for your life. Talk about a hectic start. Hope County has an amazing open world for you to explore and throw yourself into. You also have the guns and fangs for hire who will assist you in combat, such as everyone's favorite dog in Boomer, or of course, Cheeseburger the Bear, who is a local celebrity, both in game and the real world. The game also has other activities for you to do, such as fishing and stunt races, and you can also play the entire game through in co-op thanks to Friends for Hire, which I love doing with my brother. The game has a really enjoyable story as you try to bring down the seeds and Eden's Gate. The game also has a fun multiplayer mode with custom-made maps, but if you've enjoyed previous Far Cry games or first-person shooters, you'll love Far Cry 5, which makes it into one of the best games of 2018. I was chosen by God. Back in January, we were blessed with the release of Monster Hunter World, and whilst it is technically a sequel, the series wasn't popularized in the West until World came out. For many, including myself, this was their first Monster Hunter experience, and I can say it definitely left an impression. Humans have their eyes set on the New World, a wild land where beasts roam free and mysteries abound. You're a hunter with the Fifth Fleet, who helps provide important research about the beasts from the ground by tracking, taming, and hunting the monsters you come across. The game takes the form of a third-person RPG with a huge range of weapons to master. And when I say master, I mean master. The weapons can be weird and difficult to get your head around, but once you figure out the nuances of how to properly DPS a target, you're instantly addicted by how satisfying it is, and look into ways to optimize your build to increase damage. And that's your game. You hunt, you recover monster items, you use these to craft better weapons or gear in a different flavor that has perks to improve your gameplay. And then you go again and you hunt bigger, meaner monsters. The hunts can get very difficult, making adjustments to your gear and going in again with more success feels quite fantastic. It's a really fun and satisfying game, especially when you start learning some of the more hidden mechanics. If you want a game to really sink your teeth into and get fully immersed in the ecosystem, if you love researching optimal builds and working towards getting them with fun gameplay while being involved in a supportive and intense community, I would highly recommend. We now have a masterpiece from Ninja Theory that is now an Xbox first party studio and one of the best games in 2018, Hellblade Senua's Sacrifice. And some awesome news is that Hellblade Senua's Sacrifice has just become available on Xbox Game Pass. So if you've got Game Pass, you can go and download it and play right now. The game is all about the story and the way that the game plays on your mind. You constantly have voices going on in your head from all directions, which really helps add to the game's atmosphere. After all, it's not often a game is revered for trying to cause psychosis. A lot of this game is about exploring the world and solving puzzles. You'll find yourself spending ages just admiring your surroundings as the game is beautiful. The combat also feels epic, Though simple as you parry and slash your way through the Northmen, this is a game that you definitely just want to enjoy the narrative and experience. So go download it with Xbox Game Pass right now and you won't be disappointed. Just slightly terrified. The moment when you 
you look into the eyes of the one who is supposed to reassure you. A surprise entry to the list up next. Who knew you could have so much fun with a business simulation game, organizing and setting up a park for the public to enjoy, ensuring the safety and fun is at maximum at all times? I guess dinosaurs adding into the mix does make things a little bit more interesting. Jurassic World Evolution was released in June with over 40 types of dinosaurs and five islands to design, populate and maybe even destroy. Keeping your guests happy is no easy feat, especially when those cheeky raptors keep escaping and trying to eat all the kids. But with enough careful planning and resources, you can make sure your guests have a tippy top time while buying lots of overpriced merch in the process. Think Roller Coaster Tycoon without the roller coasters, although there is a monorail which is kind of close enough. It's pretty fun to make your own strands of dino DNA because apparently they never learn from their mistakes and seeing what kind of cute boy or terrifying beast you can end up with. You can also name all the dinos after your friends and family, throw them in the pen and see what happens. Maybe they'll be friends. Maybe not. I know, however, what I would predict. Love it or hate it, Fortnite has absolutely dominated gaming in 2018, leaking into everything in the industry in an impressive way. And while it didn't release this year, it's fair to say this is the year Fortnite became a cultural phenomenon. From kids flossing in school playgrounds to million dollar tournaments and Drake himself playing live on a stream, Fortnite has had a massive impact in the gaming sphere. Based on the original Save the World game that released mid last year, Epic Games saw an opportunity to make a new battle royale game for all ages. It was a weird one for people to get their heads around at first. This wasn't your stereotypical battle royale. Yes, you had to survive to the end and shoot your opponents to eliminate them, but there was also building and weird cartoony graphics and a far more casual vibe to the whole thing. All those awesome glider effects look even better in 4K with Xbox One X enhancements. As of now, the game has become incredibly competitive with huge esports prize pools available for anybody to win, but it retains that silly vibe it was once known for, with golf carts, boogie bombs and plunger grapple guns. Fortnite has never taken itself too seriously and it's also free to play, a combination that makes it appealing to all sorts of people. Honourable mentions for 2018 include Destiny 2 Forsaken, making the game feel fun and fresh to play all over again with new game modes, guns with random roles, new raid and destinations to explore. So please, more expansions like Forsaken in the future. Also, we can't fail to mention Assassin's Creed Odyssey, giving 2018 its finest dose of intense Greek combat. Featuring more role-play mechanics than previous installments in the franchise, it's a bold step for such an established series, but one which has definitely paid off. A Way Out was an awesome two-player co-op game, and that's truly cooperation. You have to be working in sync to escape in innovative ways. A very fun release this year and is definitely worth an honorable mention. I don't know anything about me, man. Maybe not but Harvey killed someone very close to me. With or without you, I'm going after him. So there we have it. Those are the best games of 2018. Make sure to let us know which game you think was the best down in the comments below. Leave us a sub if you're new to the channel and you want to see more from Xbox On. But otherwise, hopefully, see you next time. Bye. Bye.